good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Sharda Motor Industries Limited Q1 FI23 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivasan Narsimha, Chief Executive Officer from Sharda Motors Industries. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I am the CFO, Srinivasan. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon to all of you. A very warm welcome to all the participants on this call. Today, I am joined by Mr. Ashindran, our CEO, and our Investor Relations Advisors, uh, SGA. I am hoping that uh, you have seen our results and have received our investor presentation by now. The presentation is also uploaded on Stock Exchange as well as company website for reference. Before discussing the company's performance for the quarter, I would like to shed some light on the industry. As we all know, the auto industry has been struggling for the last four to six quarters due to semiconductor shortage, rising commodity prices due to an inflationary environment, and supply chain disruptions due to geopolitical tensions. As the economy is stabilizing, India has been witnessing growth across the sectors, including the two-wheeler, three-wheeler, and TV segments. We have also been seeing surge in demand for CVs, which gives us confidence that the worst is behind us now, and the overall economy and the mobility industry is on a revival, and in fact, on a growth trajectory. The rising demand, improving customer confidence in rural areas, easing semiconductor supply issues as well as correction in commodity prices will provide further boost to the industry's success. From April to June 22, auto sales improved across the board. The recent automaker sales figures continue to show an upward trend, which is expected to continue in the second quarter. Indeed, our most important customers anticipate growth this year. In terms of auto industry performance during the quarter one FI23, we saw sales of 7.9 lakh units in passenger vehicles, a year-on-year -year growth of 64%. 2.1 lakh units of commercial vehicles, more than 100% growth to year-on-year. And uh, 1.3 lakh units three-wheeler sales up by 212% year-on-year. And 35.4 lakh units of two-wheeler sales up by 60% year-on-year. The auto industry expects car sales to accelerate this holiday season as a result of new launches and improved production but is cautiously optimistic about the road ahead once the festivities end. The CV recovery is on track as the freight rates improve and fleet operators gain financial strengths. Demand in the entire CV segment remains strong, which benefits component suppliers like us. We expect Indian CV market to achieve a good growth in the coming years. As the monsoon is progressing well, we see good rural demand for tractors in the country. We are optimistic about the demand scenario from both PV, CV, and tractor segment. With our ongoing R&D efforts, we are ready to capitalize on the new opportunities in the automotive segment. Now I come to the business performance for the quarter. Our Q1 FY23 revenue stood at INR 628 crores and was higher by 33% versus quarter one of FY22. Further on a sequential basis, compared to Q4 FY22, our revenue was higher by 2%. Our EBITDA, including other income, stood at INR 69 crores in Q1 FY23 as against INR 46 crores uh, in Q1 FY22, a growth of 48%. Further, EBITDA margins, including other income, were at 11% in this quarter as compared to 9.8% in the Q1 of FY22. Our PBT stood at 60 crores, up by 64% on a year-on-year -year basis. Our PBT margins also rose to 9.5% in Q1 FY23 as against 7.7% in Q1 FY22. Our consolidated profit after tax for Q1 FY23 was INR 45 crores as compared to INR 27 crores of Q1 FY22, 
which is an increase of 66%. I am happy to mention here that we were able to achieve our target of making our JV profitable. Though for the quarter it is marginal at rupees 50 lakhs, we are hoping to improve our profitability from here on. With this, uh, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek from Bowhead, India. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what was the turnover of our JV business parker uh, for this quarter? Hi, Abhishek. This is Achim Desai. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure being here. Uh, so now answering the question in terms of turnover, maybe uh, Shrini San, you can share uh, the value added sales turnover for the quarter. Yeah, for the quarter, the value added the revenue for Ebo Special JV was 44.3 crores. Okay. Uh, and sir, also, sir, is there any update on the uh, sub component export uh, that we talked about uh, in the last couple of quarters? Uh, uh, has there been any progress in that area? Yeah, so we make good progress in terms of uh, business inquiries, and right now we are quoting for multiple RFQs. So our teams are busy working on it. Uh, in terms of any material business nomination, we haven't received any so far, but we will uh, continue to update uh, as we move forward in the next couple of quarters and years. Okay, so, sir, uh, just one last question uh, on trim four, uh, sir. Uh, uh, what traction have we seen till now? Uh, has it been encouraging? Yeah, so Trend 4, the traction is very good. And uh, it is scheduled to come into October 2022. So, in fact, in the next one or two months. But, of course, Trend 4 is a very small market as of now for us uh, because, you know, only very select uh, tractors require the product. Uh, but uh, Trend 5, which is scheduled for October 2000, uh, oh, sorry, April 2024, uh, that is where the big um, market comes in. And there as well, we are seeing very, very strong traction. And we expect uh, very good performance in terms of business development. Okay, okay sir. Sir, uh, but would it be fair to assume that uh, since, let's say, uh, in OEMX, uh, who will be present in both uh, tractors above 50 and also below that. So if we make inroads in trend 4, then it would also help us in the uh, next regulation change? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we have we expect uh, all the top 4 5 customers to be there. Already for trend 4, we have uh, most of the tractor customers and as well as the products which we export from India. And we expect the similar trend to be in trend 5 also. So in terms of customer acquisition, we have already concluded as a result of TREM4 and the export opportunity, which is indirect exports when the tractor company exports their tractor to Europe and America. Okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Vishal from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question, sir. And uh, uh, sir, my question is regarding uh, the value addition contribution to the revenue for this quarter and similar number for the uh, quarter last year, same quarter last year. Sure. So value added sales for the standalone company we don't provide due to uh, customer restrictions, but we are working towards that. And we've made already progress with one customer uh, in terms of the ability to provide it. And I think just two or three more customers to go where we'll be fully able to provide the value added sales number. Uh, but as of now, we don't provide uh, for the standalone company. 
Okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, is this the same thing? Uh, the integration you were working on, which you have shared last last quarter, right, sir? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we made progress with uh, one customer. Actually, we have able to um, you know manage uh, to showcase as well as manage uh, the catalyst. Now we have only two, or maybe a third customer now, which is a new customer remaining. So we're making progress and we're quite hopeful that, you know, in this year we will be able to uh, provide good value-added sales data for the standalone business as well. Okay, okay. So my uh, next question is regarding the top-line growth, which has been, so if you consider X of Maruti volume, it has been significantly lower during the last two quarters, the delta number, compared to what has been the volume growth X of Maruti uh, quarter on quarter. So is it because of some sort of uh, erosion we have seen in the market share or is it because of the lower sales of models where we are present? Sure. So, you know, one that our products are uh, engine based, right? So what we see probably in terms of sales data um, would not be the accurate measure, but uh, it would in the long term also matter. But our products are engine based. And the engine production data could be a better guide. And in fact, we are working on something where we could even showcase that in the next couple of quarters. And in engines, what happens is that there is engine inventory, which then goes into a vehicle. Then there is vehicle inventory. So this is a long chain. And hence, you know, quarterly measurements may not be the correct way of looking at it. But if you look at it in like, an annualized basis, we have uh, outperformed and we expect to continue to outperform. In addition to that, engines in the industry are cross-used between passenger vehicles, LCVs, sometimes they are domestic production, sometimes they're exported. So that also adds another variable to it. And then there is, of course, the general product mix, right? That sometimes in a quarter or two quarters, the OEM will sell one engine more than the other based on various reasons. So that also um, uh, plays an impact. But as a solution to, you know, having better linkage, one is to look at annual trends because it's not possible to look at quarter by quarter or even two quarters. And second is to link more towards engine production. And then, of course, as we start showcasing um, value-added sales, which I mentioned that already one customer is done and two, three are remaining, that would bring um, further clarity onto it. But in a general trend, there is no uh, change as such in terms of uh, reason for outperforming or underperforming. We remain to be uh, the same. So it is more just quarterly variability, and it could probably be adjusted by the end of the year. Okay, okay. So, so you mean to say there is no erosion as such uh, in in the in the market share number in terms of totality? No, there is no erosion, and uh, you know it just requires to look at annual trends. And okay. whenever you look at annual trends, you will see out performance only. Uh, we engine production and this whole long chain of engine production uh, versus uh, engine inventory versus vehicle inventory and then vehicle sales uh, takes time and it's you know skewed because of a lot of these issues that uh, have been happening in terms of supply chain in the industry but i think on an annual basis we are very optimistic and we uh, hopefully will outperform the industry in the longer term great sir great so uh, any new order wins you have got uh, if you can share that information for q1 fy23 any new models so all the models that you see on the market uh, generally have a product on it. Anything that you hear has a product because our products are uh, engine linked, right? So often the engines are carry over only. So let's say if car X is launched on the market, the car will be new, but you, usually the engine is uh, carry forward only. So I think for most of the products, uh, we have won the order de facto just because the engine is the same. And of course, uh, we are doing very well in terms of VSX RD, uh, which will come in next year for April 2023. So we've won a very good amount of business there, and we could uh, maintain or slightly increase market share also as a result of uh, the RD norms coming into India. Great, sir. Uh, so my last question is regarding the Evers Parcel JD. You said the value addition number was 44.3 or close for this quarter. 
write the similar number for Q1 FY22 and Q4 FY22. So we don't have it offhand, but uh, we will share that. Uh, but I think in general, the value added sales for financial year uh, 22 last year was approximately 110 to 120 crores around that range. And of course, so this is a good performance uh, for this quarter in terms of sales growth indicator. Okay, sir. Uh, thank, thanks uh, for, for answering the question. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants to press star in one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Apurva from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. And thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on the industry. So if you look at the uh, commentary by most of the PV, PV manufacturers, so I think this year it could be one of the finest year for the Indian do domestic market. Maybe some media number, media figures float number of 36 to 37 lakhs. So that would be roughly 20% growth. So are we seeing su such kind of buoyancy in terms of order book? Because we are dealing with, I think, most of the leading players who are gaining the market share. So I think you would be the first indication that whether industry is poised for this kind of number. Uh, I'm not considering the China-Taiwan scenario, which can, again, uh, disturb the semiconductor issue. But considering the normal scenario, are you seeing such kind of a buoyancy and whether that is reflected in your order book as well? Yeah. So in general, the scenario looks uh, optimistic. And uh, of course, cautiously optimistic because of geopolitical situations and other things. But yes, it's optimistic. And if we generally look at the trend in the industry, the waiting periods are only so high right now for cars. And also, there's a lot of pent up demand. And uh, in general, uh, numbers are looking good so far. And uh, we expect a good year for uh, all pass car, LCV, all the segments. It is looking good um, as of now. But sir, my point is, ke, are we seeing similar scenario in your order book? Because if they are so confident of financial year FI23, I think being a component supplier, that should be reflected in your order book as well, right? Absolutely. And the way our thing goes, you know, order book is that they give us schedules, right? Whatever they're producing. So if they are going to sell more, then automatically the schedules go up. And the schedules keep adjusting on a month-on-month -month basis. But yes, as a general trend, the visibility is good and there is optimism in terms of the numbers which is being reflected in the industry. So, sir, is it fair to say if industry is growing at maybe 20 percentage, so if the uh, scenario remains so similar, so our growth should be higher than the industry. So, that has been the trend. So, is that fact remained for the current year as well? That is what we are hoping, that we would be able to outperform the industry and that is where our hope is here. Great, sir. And the same thing applies for CV industry as well, because in the initial remarks, what Srini sir said, okay, for PV, you are maybe cautiously optimistic, but you are more confident on the CV. So again, CV, uh, our growth rate would be higher than industry, right? Yeah, so when I say CV, I define it more as uh, LCV, you know, because as a standalone company, we are playing in a segment which is lower than 3 liters. So, you know, 2.5, 1.5 liter kind of segment. That segment just also looks optimistic and there looks to be good demand there as well. And general CV also there is good demand, but when I would, uh, for as a company, we would benefit much more from the LCV demand. Great, understood. And so one question on the uh, margin side. So if I look at your gross margin or EBITDA margin, so uh, maybe on a year-on-year -year basis, that has been uh, some improvement. But on a quarterly basis, the margins are coming down because of this change in the gross margin. So is, is the function of the commodity inflation or change in the value add or revenue mix, means value add or non-value add? Because till the time you don't share value added versus non-value added, it's very difficult for us to understand the maybe numbers or margins. So if you can help us in a broader way, what is uh, what is the major reason for slightly margin reduction in the current quarter? Sure. So as you noted, YOY is much better. And on a sequential basis, it is a little bit down. And that is just, you know, general uh, mixed variance that happens because it's not too much also that it's down. So it's just general mixed variance that is the major contributor to this uh, change. 
and YOY anyways, it is a much better performance. So there is nothing as such major that we see. And sir, would you like to guide us for any, maybe uh, maybe two to three years down the line, what could be the sustainable numbers in terms of margin? So margin, we are, uh, you know, expected to maintain or uh, slightly improve also. So in terms of margins, it looks good because as the new norms come in, the products become even more proprietary in nature. And that, uh, you know, definitely has a benefit to margin. So we expect to have a good margin profile going forward as well. So, so excluding other income, can it be 12, 13%, maybe two years or three years down the line? Sure. So I think um, rather than putting a number on it, because, you know, we look at it on a value added basis and that would be a better guide. So when we are able to share the value added numbers, more specifics can be given. But in general, it looks good, you know, that in I can just anyways guide on general. It looks good that as these uh, products are coming in, new norms are coming in, margin we would be able to maintain or improve from, let's say, 2025-26, uh, we look at a good trend here. Yeah. Perfect, sir. And so just final thing on this JV. So, Srinitha, can you help me with exact number, either revenue or and maybe PBT or EBIT level uh, for the quarter? So, so I think what we'll do is that maybe we'll just share the uh, numbers offline because on the value-added basis, it's more broad that we just want to share regarding the JV, but the numbers I will use and Srinitha can share uh, offline. Great, sir. Understood. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Agastya Dave from CAO Capital. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, please proceed. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, sir, just a clarification. So TREM 5 will be sh is scheduled for a start in April 2024, right? Yes. Sir, I'm I'm just trying to understand. Uh, this is basically a combination of all the questions that everyone else has have have asked. Uh, just to get a sense, how will the ramp up in sales happen? So, uh, Trem Four is coming up later this year, right? So, uh, will we see uh, in the next quarter? Um, you guys will be building up some inventories, right? Uh, I understand Trem Four is minimal for you, but uh, uh, will we see one quarter before? Uh, uh, some some changes are scheduled. Will we see bump up in um, revenues happening, and then subsequently, uh, how will the ramp up happens? Uh, how will the how will the ra ramp up happen once uh, the thing has been notified and and production has started? Uh, I'm just trying to understand: is it just a quantum step which happens immediately, uh, or uh, it's a steady increase over a period of time? Sure. So in the case of Trend 4, as you noted, is very marginal. Um, so, you know, there could be um, increase, but I nothing significant in the case of Trend 4. But sure. in the case of Trend 5, as well as BSX RD, what generally happens, and it depends on the notification. If the notification says that it is as per uh, the sales, the cutoff, right? Um, or is it as per the production? So far, the trend has been that it is as per sales, the cutoff. So when it is as for sales, the cutoff generally about two months before um, mm -hmm. and there is, a, you know, a, a gradual ramp up of production that happens. So maybe, you know, a quarter before uh, there would be a little bit of a ramp up. And then from the date it becomes effective, it becomes, uh, uh, let's say, fully um, into production. And usually it is, let's say, some, you know, ramp up challenges could be there. So over one to two quarters, it would fully stabilize. So the quarter before and the quarter where it's applicable, there would be a ramp up. In the case of BSX RD, it would also mean that there's a ramp down of the products which are on BSX, right? So it right. would maybe nullify or maybe have some slight uh, this thing. In the case of Trend 5, it would be all fresh, right? So that would right. show up in the numbers uh, quite a lot. So trem five will be purely incremental, right? Uh, this is you will not be losing anything. You will be just gaining, and uh, and BSX RD would be a net effect. Yeah, and but net positive. Because, net positive. Uh, you know we've done well. Net yes. positive. Yes. Yes. Net um, positive. Yes. But that you know uh, ramp down and ramp up period would be there um, from the quarter before and quarter after. 
and mm-hmm. in the case of trend 5 also there would be no ramp down because it's all positive it's all incrementally coming into the company so that would be all fresh sales that will come and this is totally on the government whether they choose the cut off to be uh, sales or production link so far the trend for bs4 bs6 has been sales link notification so we expect the same thing to be coming so so the transition for bs6 rd when will we see that uh, in your numbers not the cut off date but the transition uh, the first bump up hopefully a little bit in q4 financial year uh, this one so i think that jan to march period uh, we will mm-hmm. see something and uh, then of course the quarter after that it will be applicable right 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 and sir uh, uh, for you the biggest benefit uh, b- benefit will flow in from trim right right um, on a, if i look at the three transitions uh, separately on a standalone basis the the most important one is trim right right not be a six rd Yeah, so if I was to rank it, Tem Five is number one, BSX RD is number two, and then Tem Four is very minimal. So I don't have much say Tem Four. Right, right, right. Uh, so uh, one final question. Uh, uh, one of the previous participants uh, pointed out how uh, everyone is very positive on CV cycle. and people are indeed expecting a 20% increase so uh, given the commentary that you guys have given on capacity uh, capacities that we have and capacity utilizations uh, do we have enough to cater to this demand uh, would you require a certain more uh, probably de bottlenecking uh, before we can do the uh, before we can start producing at this higher level uh, how is the uh, capacity as of now sway capacity so yeah our capacity can be augmented um, uh, fairly uh, easily but yes it could require some incremental capex and some de bottleneck and but uh, nothing uh, significant you know because this is fairly uh, asset light to uh, augment capacity so in some cases uh, there could be where we need to uh, enhance our capacity as we are running on uh, higher number side great sir uh, thank you very much sir uh, and all the best for the next quarter Thank you so much. Thank you. Reminder to all the participants to press star n one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sonal from Bowhead, India. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir, for this opportunity. I had couple of questions. Firstly, you know, on Gen Four, is there any out of the top four five factory manufacturers? Is there any manufacturer where you are the only supplier? And so far, have you seen all the three players participating in that market, or it's been a one-player or two-player market? Sure. So, in all the um, uh, customers, we generally have uh, you know another competitor, but not on the same uh, same platform, but on like another one. So, usually, it's never that the hundred percent business is given to one person. So, generally, there's always a second, but. um in terms of competition there are all three that are participating and of course you know it's that probably two will be much more significant and the third will get some marginal benefit so sir when you look at the market share of the car or the lcv market versus the tractor market is there a reason for you to believe that the market share in your case could be significantly better because the pie will get largely divided among the top two players then three players in terms of totality or uh, you know even the car market says that the top two players are uh, very significant or and the third is marginal so i'm talking about the relative market share in tractors versus cars and lcv yeah so in general the number one thing is that tractors there's no situation kirip two situation like uh, you know maruti's and the passenger vehicles where we don't play which is roughly 40 50% so with that definitely that benefit will come into the tractor market and uh, that tractors uh, has the full market is open and uh, then given that this is also a little bit more uh, proprietary of a technology very similar to lcv and cv there are only three players where it is likely to be going towards and hence we could do a better market share as an overall but again okay. it's all uh, you know it has to be seen but we are optimistic about this market and thirdly is it that the you know the third player is also dominant in the car market and you wouldn't expect it to be that dominant in the tractor market so 
sorry, I couldn't hear this question. Sorry if you can just repeat it. Sir, is it also true that the third player is also a large player in the car market, but wouldn't be that dominant in the tractor market? Yes, that is, you know, what we are hoping towards, but it's dynamic because of the global situation. And a lot of these companies, the other two competitors we have are both international, and there's a lot of restructuring and ownership changes happening by globally. So it's very hard to predict um, what their uh, take would be on these markets. But we are hoping for some uh, good uh, market share when it comes to this business. Secondly, there is a lot of questions pertaining to the fact that you know you are growing less than the car market. I think from Q4 and Q1 compared to quarterly run rate. But you know when the car market had declined, or you'll see your sales never fell. The people were building, taking parts from you in advance, storing the inventory, so that as and when they will have you know the parts which were in shortage in supply, they could immediately use one, and therefore you never saw a dip, and therefore you're not seeing a rise also as uh, the retail sales are, you know, rising. Could that explain your performance in last four quarters, firstly, uh, significant outperformance, and then, uh, you know, compared to retail sales or, you know, wholesale sales? So our product is not really linked to the sales number of fast cars. So if you go to the, and it's an engine-based product, so if we look at engine production data, the picture would be different. But anyways, what you're saying is correct. As I mentioned that um, there, this is a long value chain that we're talking about, that we produce a part, then it goes to the OEM, then the OEM keeps inventory of that, then they produce an engine, then they will take inventory of the engine, then they produce the vehicle, then the vehicle has inventory, and then of course it gets sold. So it's a large chain, so a quarter on quarter kind of uh, uh, thing will be very tough. But in general, what you're saying is correct that yes, that these, uh, you know, anomaly numbers which are coming at the base effect, it could be a little bit because of what you also said. And this is a long chain. And if you look at the longer term trend that we have outperformed, and I think that is uh, going to be there. So once the data gets normalized, um, you will find that uh, we are uh, outperforming um, and doing better than people. And of course, then, you know, on a quarter and quarter basis, general product mix variance also plays in uh, a lot. So, sir, if I look at, you know, uh, that in general, the car industry or LTV industry is supposed to do better this quarter as compared to even the normalized quarters, you know, uh, of last two quarters, you know, and so forth. And therefore, would you now from this current quarterly run rate, expect some top line increase because you know whatever inventory extra built up or less built up you know six months is a long time for all those things to play out and uh, uh, you know would you expect this run rate to continue or would you expect some further top line increase because the industry would see significant growth in run up to the festival season yeah, i think it's on best to look at our yeah it's best not to look at the car sales numbers as such or LTV sales numbers, it's best to focus for uh, engine production, annual trends in our case, right? And um, that we are optimistic about. And uh, in general, we are, uh, you know, more optimistic on the sales picture. It's very tough to comment on one quarter, two quarters uh, based on these uh, sales numbers alone. But yes, we do expect to grow um, at industry or better. I think the reason why I was asking you was that, you know, uh, what I understand the quarterly is different, but on a nine-month basis, engineering car productions can't be different. So, therefore, you know, uh, you Sorry, see, on a nine-month basis, on nine-month basis, there is no way the car sales would be different than the engine sales, you know. One quarter here or there is definitely understandable, you know. It's normal in any business. So, what I was trying to understand from you was that maybe there was an inventory built up by car companies, as you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, you know, in the past, and therefore your sales never dipped when the entire auto industry industry was, you know, showing bad numbers. You massively outperformed, you know, uh, compared to almost all our auto industries in India. Um, but at the same time, last six months, for the same reason, uh, you know, uh, you didn't see an increase in sales. But now, you know, uh, the sales number are going to be significantly higher than what anybody would have expected, maybe you know, six nine months back. And therefore, you know, uh, 
wouldn't you expect that the run rate at least from Q2 should be higher than the run rates of let's say Q3, Q4, Q1, you know? Because it's not possible that over a 12 month period car sales and you know engine sales would be materially different. Sure. So I think that's what I'm saying. I we cannot guide on a quarterly basis or based on sales. So we I can only guide on longer term trends, um, not like this. And definitely offline, um, uh, we can connect to understand the data um, and we can share guidance on it. But like this, I don't have available um, any guidance to give uh, on next one quarter, two quarter, three quarters. It's just more focused on the longer term. And in terms of the longer term parameters, uh, we don't see any change whatsoever. Um, in business performance, but we can definitely connect and just uh, understand the data as well. And in general guidance, uh, you know, we can provide as much as this. As of now. Sure, Asim, I'll connect with you. Uh, and, you know, just one, two last questions. What has been the progress on PLI scheme and EV ventures? Sure. So our yeah. PLI scheme is linked to our existing products only, and we're still awaiting, uh, uh, you know, further clarity. And we are working on it, and we will share as soon as you know we have more data on the PLI side because there's a lot of ambiguity uh, on the government fund also. But we have been selected uh, for the PLI scheme, and we've been selected for our existing products, some products which we wanted to localize and enhance. But we'll share as soon as uh, this ambiguity gets cleared off on the PLI scheme. So, would Prem 5D also applicable? Would you be allowed to claim, you know, uh, the benefits of PLI on Prem 5? Would you have that kind of clarity? Sorry, sorry, uh, again, if you can repeat. So, so, you said you've got PLI scheme for your existing products, you know. Now, now would existing products also include the products which are meant for practice? Yes, some, some products could be applicable. See, in general, the products are cross-used between uh, LCV tractors, etc. But yeah, there is a part within the product where we will focus on PLI. So as we get more clarity, it will be then beneficial to everything. I would say not any specific uh, market segment. Um, but we are waiting for more clarity as there is a lot of ambiguity right now um, from the uh, government side. But sir, as of now, there's no reason for you to believe that Trend 5 products would not be eligible for PLI. As of now, based on whatever knowledge you have. I mean, I don't know. I can't comment based okay. on a uh, particular this thing. I honestly uh, don't know as of now. So I can't comment uh, beyond because it's quite ambiguous, right? But as soon as we get to know more, we'll definitely on the PLI scheme, then we'll have a separate uh, presentation. As of now, we just know that we've been selected now, what the exact mechanism of how it would go, what would be applicable, what would not, it remains to be ambiguous. And we are working on getting more clarity and then having a formal plan on the PLI. So as of now, we just know we've been selected and uh, we would, of course, love to uh, be part of it. But exactly how the mechanism will work, I think still we don't have clarity, it won't be right for me to comment either way. And so lastly, on the EV businesses, where when would you expect the production to commence in what all stages and what kind of top lines could we generate out of that? Thank you. Sure, sure. Thanks. So on the EV side, which will be kinetic GV, we have already now have our revised and advanced prototypes under manufacturing and they should be completing the manufacturing process any day. And we will start testing them soon on vehicles as well as on test benches. And if the tests go well, we are quite optimistic to start some kind of pilot production uh, towards the end of Q3 slash Q4 of this financial year. But it would, of course, be contingent on uh, how the tests go. As of now, we are uh, just about completing the manufacturing of the new and advanced prototypes, which have taken into account all the uh, various concerns which we have seen in the Indian market on battery packs for uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler. Great, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratish Cheda from Lucky Investment Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, just wanted to check... Uh, on uh, are we tracking the uh, mirroring the volume growth of our key OEM uh, in the quarter gone by, uh, or there is any deviation versus 
the volume growth of the QOEM. Now, I am not basing this question on your revenues because of the fact that if, you know, if there is any catalyst which is now directly provided by the client, then revenue is not the, not the number to be tracked for your name. Uh, so the better way to track probably is trade the operating profit growth number. So just wanted to check if you are mirroring or lagging the uh, OEM growth rate, your key OEM, which is Tata, uh, Mahindra, and uh, I think you that. So one, you know, we don't discuss specific customers, but in general, no, I am uh, I am asking some totals. I am not discussing any customers. Yeah, so we don't measure um, our quarterly performance based on the sales data of any OEMs or aggregate OEMs also, um, because of uh, the things I just mentioned in the previous questions due to the engine linkage, etc. But what we do um, is, you know, in terms of business performance. Uh, we do not see any change and all the businesses that we are working on, um, those remain and there could be some enhancements only in terms of that. And we look at a slightly longer term data for that reason and we do not see uh, any changes whatsoever. So, sir, uh, if that's the case, then your three OEMs have grown QOQ uh, in volume. Uh, I don't see uh, it happening in your case. So is that something for us to understand? Yeah, absolutely. So again, our products are engine based and they are not based on the sales number of OEM. The engine production data will be a much better guide than the data point you're referring to. Engine inventory begins when the part is taken then it goes into a vehicle, and then this leads to a long chain all the way to the dealer end. So on a quarterly basis or two quarter basis, there is going to be a lot of variability. Then the same engines are used between passenger cars, like commercial vehicles, some domestic production, some export sales. Then within OEMs and within our own this thing as well, there is general product mix variance also that there can be some products which are sold more, there have been some products which are sold less. And then for all these reasons, it is better to look at annual trends and it is better to focus more on engine production. And rather than um, looking you know, Q1, Q specifics, we look at longer term um, engine production trends. So those are the few reasons. And then of course the challenge of uh, value added sales, that definitely is something that we're working on. And as I said, we've made progress from one customer and two to three are uh, remaining further, right? And any other way of utilizing operating profit exact as a mechanism um, may not be uh, correct. And uh, we can go into the details probably offline in terms of why that could not be in barometer because that will include uh, other aspects as well. Okay, thank you. I'll come back for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Nirvana from Laha from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, in the presentation, I noticed that you have written that Trend 5 may be postponed by a year. So are we now expecting Trend 5 in April 25? No, we are not expecting uh, April 25. We are just uh, saying that there can be some delay based on uh, October 2022, trend 4. But as of now, there is no notification. Sorry, trend 5. I'm not talking about trend 4. Trend 5 you have written in the <clears throat> presentation that there could be some trend 5 likely to be postponed by a year. No, so that's what I'm saying, that based on trend 4, trend 4 is linked to trend 5, that trend 4 got delayed from April to October in 2022. So based on that trend, it's only a big thing. I'm not sure if it's in the uh, uh, presentation, uh, but uh, hence we're saying, as of now, there is no notification per se. Okay. And uh, how long before the notification finally comes in, uh, do you, will you gear up for production or you will start receiving orders? 
so we have actually already started receiving orders and we've almost completed the design activity for a lot of OEMs. So uh, OEMs are fully gearing up for uh, Trend 5. And um, we receive orders with a, a lag period for sure because this part has to be designed from um, scratch from the OEM's perspective. And uh, we've already, the work has started uh, here and probably production, as I said, you know, is much closer to the time. Okay, great. And the orders are in line with uh, the kind of market share that you just described to a previous participant you were hoping to take. Yeah, so right now it's too soon to comment on, you know, exact uh, orders and also, you know, we are not uh, giving orders customer-wise because we receive it. But yes, the trend looks good and we are under um, the business development cycle with most of the customers already and we are in a good stage and a lot of work is going on in our R&D uh, regarding this product. Okay, that's great. Uh, secondly, on the Ever Sparker JV, Earlier, I remember Mr. Srinivasan had said that 200 crore value-added sale was the break-even number. Now, it seems like we have broken even this quarter at 44 crores. So, can I assume that there have been some cost efficiencies? So, it's like, you know, basically on an annualized basis, let's say 45, that it's almost like, it's not always exact 200. So, and there is, of course, the variability there. But yeah, there has been some... A bit of uh, you know optimization which goes on as sales were low for quite a lot of time, and in general, uh, you know that little bit uh, in terms of break even, uh, there could be shifts here and there. It's the uh, commercial vehicle industry, so there is all lot of cyclicality also, which is linked to it. Right. Okay. And can you give us some color on the number of engine programs that you managed to enter with? These two, I think you have two customers there, right? So can you give us some color on how many engine programs they have and in how many are you present now? Sure. I don't have um, the number of engines that they have offhand, but we are presenting two engines, one each with them. But I don't have it. Maybe we can scan and uh, provide you that uh, offline. So just, just on a doll path, like, would it be one-third or one-fifth or one-tenth? I mean, I'm just trying to estimate the kind of doll path quantum. I don't have that data in front of me right now, so I would not be able to comment. But I'll definitely, I think, we'll get in touch and we'll provide you back to the best of our ability. Okay, great. And I have a qualitative question. So <clears throat> I just want to understand what is the... A true mode that you know Sharda has in in its standalone business. So I understand the Everstacker JV Everstacker is bringing in you know what? Hello. Yeah. Uh, I, I lost. I lost your last two. Please repeat it. Yeah. Sorry. So I understand what is the mode. Uh, that or, or the barrier to entry that Sharda has in the standalone business. So in, in the Eberspacher JV, I can understand that Eberspacher is bringing in, uh, uh, you know, uh, world-class technology. If you could help us and understand, like, how are we, we the only Indian player and there are only two foreign competitors with us in the standalone business, and we expect that scenario to continue in the future. And because capital doesn't seem to be a barrier because the uh, uh, net fixed asset terms are pretty high and the strength and incremental capital requirements are also not very high. So if uh, capital is not the barrier, then can you just elaborate and help us understand what? Hello? I would, uh, sorry to interrupt, I would request Mr. Laha to uh, use your handset to ask a question, please. We are not Hi. able to understand what you're saying, am I, sir. Am I audible? I am using my handset, actually. Sir, your voice is fumbling a little bit. There is a uh, disturbance in your line. So we are not able to understand what you're speaking, actually. Ma'am, is it better now? Yes, please proceed. We'll try to yeah. understand that. Yeah, so I'll make it short. If you could help me understand the uh, barrier to entry or the mode that Sharta has in its standalone business in terms of, you know, IT or like what is it that is 
uh, making us the only Indian company along with two foreign competitors having such a large market share in the PV and LCV segment. Uh, because in the Edwards Parker GV, I can understand that Edwards Parker's technology gives us that edge. If you could help me understand in the standalone business, what is that edge that Sharda has and why it will persist? So uh, thanks for the question. The first thing in terms of a moat is um, the R&D uh, that we have. So, you know, we invested in research and development uh, almost 12, 13 years ago, while uh, a lot of these products that which we are seeing today, uh, BS6, Trend 5, etc., what we are talking about, were nowhere in the horizon. And hence, from that time only, we've been able to, we, was, we started working on these technologies, and now, after many, many years of research and development, uh, we were able to successfully develop these technologies. And the R&D facility that we invested in 12 years ago, uh, that is equivalent to the R&D facility which any of our large competitors have even globally, right? So our large competitors would have it in America, France, etc. Uh, the um, facility that we have in Chennai is of uh, global standard. And it is equivalent to the mother facilities also, right? But it's, of course, available in India, and uh, the cost of sector is much, much more competitive. So I would say R&D is the number one strength that we have. And it is very hard to, uh, you know, get the same R&D now for any other Indian company because it would take 10 plus years, plus a lot of experience in transitioning from BS4 to BS6 to RD, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. So it's very hard to duplicate. Second, uh, we also, you know, as a result of our uh, tailwind of investing in R&D much before it was required, these technologies, we gained a lot of experience in actual execution uh, and building these products from scratch and putting them on the field. And now these have been running on the field very successfully. So that in itself is a huge moat because any customer now always asks for in-field experience. And given that BS6 is so new to India, um, uh, as well as uh, BS4 was only there for three years, um, the in-field experience is something uh, no other Indian company actually has apart from us. And then, again, this is a very good competitive advantage because a new competitor uh, would take time, uh, maybe a decade, to achieve the uh, same kind of experience. Third, we are uh, fully uh, backward integrated, and a lot of the proprietary parts uh, that go in um, to this product, uh, we have uh, facilities for that. And uh, we do things like, you know, proprietary stampings and tubes in-house, uh, which is very different um, from what even our international competitors are doing. And lastly, to produce um, this product also on the manufacturing angle, a lot of technologies are required, such as uh, calibrated canning, which take, uh, again, multiple years of development, which is something that we were uh, successfully able to do. So as a package of all these, this gives us a strong moat uh, for our exhaust system business um, in uh, India. And now this same experience and the same competitive advantage is what we want to utilize uh, for the global market from an export frontier. Got it. Thank you. That sounds really exciting. My last question, uh, Mr. Ashin, is on the kinetic green JV. So is the JV also for captive supply to the three-wheeler production or is it only for the two-wheeler? It's for both. So, you know, they are more into three-wheelers right now, but they've signed up yeah. for the Chinese two-wheeler company. So it's for both. Right. And um, we will be look forward to uh, supply to both the segments right. on the captive side. Okay, so my question is... start, of still... course... Uh, please, go, please go. No, please, please complete it. I'll ask it after that. So, yeah, so we will start, of course, incrementally, right? Because we want to be very, very careful. This is something new to us. So we want to be very, very careful and we want to uh, keep learning. So we will start gradually. This is not going to be a big bang approach, but applicability is on both ends of that. Okay. So the plan is that Kinetic will replace the existing vendor for BMS for three wheelers with Sharga, right? With the GV. No, it's not necessarily a replace. I would say it could also be supplement. There's no uh, thing like that. But um, yeah, and there are many new... Um, vehicles also that they're working on. 
Okay, and their two-wheeler production, do you have any sense which quarter they are going to start? They announced the uh, tire piping in January. Any idea on when they are going to start the, the first production? So, you know, it's quite dynamic, and I think there's no firm production date as of now, but uh, they are also taking it uh, incrementally. Of course, this is a good news that uh, they now have a technology partner, uh, but I do not have any SOP that uh, they have in mind as of now. Okay, all right. Thank you for patiently answering the questions and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshat Mehta from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes, please yes. proceed. Yeah, so, so uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one is that, uh, you know, uh, you in your Q4 call said that in the GV with Abyss Parker, uh, that around uh, 200 crores is the, uh, so 100 crores uh, revenue rate last year and 200 crores is the take even. And last year you had around 50% capacity utilization. So if we take the number to 200 crores, you will be essentially utilizing your entire capacity. So on that front, as well as on your, you know, new Tremfi opportunity, which is coming, can you give up some color on you know, the amount of additional capex that you will be requiring to, you know, to see these opportunities? Sure. So one trend five is uh, standalone, right? And it is not uh, part of any JV. Um, yeah. And second, on the capacity end, you know, in general, this business, uh, uh, we can augment capacity very easily with incremental capex. So it's not a very a big point like it is in, um, you know, other industries or components in terms of um, adding capacity. And uh, it generally won't flow with the exact match that you did. But just as a trend question, I'll answer that we would not require uh, much uh, um, in terms of uh, CapEx to meet any further requirements. Okay, but do you have any broad uh, ballpark number in mind? Since, you know, maintain uh, CPU for around 10 to 15 crore, so maybe, or, yeah. For trend fight or for the JV? Both of them. I mean, I just, I just need some... So, I would, I would more this thing you will know. be doing over the next 3-4 years. Yeah, it would be incremental and it would be matching our past trends only. Uh, okay. Immediate number, I don't have off time, but it would be meeting uh, roughly our past trends only of incremental. There's nothing major that we see in front of us when it comes to uh, these industries. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ut Utkash Somaya, an individual investor. Please. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes please proceed. Yeah. In each of your segments, can you please tell me your capacity utilization for FI22 and Q1 FI23? Sure. So we don't give out, uh, you know, segment-wise uh, uh, capacity utilization and uh, not on a quarterly basis. That's something that's not on the public domain. But uh, just in general, as a standalone company, we are in the high 80s uh, of capacity utilization. Okay, and can we expect this to go to 100% for the year? It's uh, very tough to predict whether it will go 100%. And, you know, by slight B bottlenecking, often we can take care also. But uh, we will see as it goes. And as I mentioned, that even in some cases, some B bottlenecking or some, uh, uh, you know, augmented uh, capacity could be required. And we could manage that with some incremental capacity. So any growth that comes going forward will be from de-bottlenecking. Can you speak a little more about de-bottlenecking as to how long does it take from when you decide to de-bottleneck and how much does it cost? What is the asset turnover? Because uh, all our growth depends, like just an idea if you can, please. It would be very helpful. Sure. So, you know, it depends uh, which aspect you want to de-bottleneck, but it can happen fairly shortly within three months. And in terms of asset turnover, there's no number that we can give, but it is incremental in nature. So it is not anything significant. So whatever growth that we have spoken about and whatever we see in the future, we only expect incremental capex. This business is not a very capex-heavy business. Okay. So 
because historically you've done asset turn upwards of 2 to 1 and a half times so we can expect that to remain if not surpass i would just get leave my answer as a general trend i won't want to go into any specific numbers regarding this just as a general trend i think we would continue in a similar way and uh, we expect the uh, incremental capex on the going forward okay for and, the uh, uh, business that you yeah and and the yeah, no, so for the business that you're talking about yeah please go if you were to um, build your current capacity all over again as of today how much would that cost another company or yourself to i don't have a number for that as of now i don't have a number for that and i think it as i said that it's not just about capacity in one of the uh, questions before you know regarding competitive advantage i think the company uh, much more is about r&d about its in field experience in these proprietary products with backward integration and its manufacturing technology so i think it would be very tough to replicate that and uh, many companies uh, globally uh, who have this have spent you know many many billion dollars to achieve that so i think from that angle it will be uh, very difficult to replicate but on a just sheer manufacturing capacity i don't know in terms of okay. and so who are your peers uh, in the domestic market so we don't name competitors as part of this call but we largely have two competitors uh, both are international companies one with french okay. origin and one with american origin one sorry one is french and the other one american okay. origin Oh god it okay and one last question on your cash you have 500 odd crores of cash on your books any plans as to how you would like to utilize it yeah so our first preference is to utilize it for an m&a in a power chain uh, agnostic product or power chain agnostic product and there are of course various conversations and Uh, deals that we are in discussion with, but uh, there is nothing that is material that we can comment on as of now. But we are scanning the market um, for M&A, and uh, as things update on the M&A front, uh, we will definitely uh, uh, keep everyone posted. But that's definitely the preference we have. But of course, we have also established a dividend policy, and we will also be looking at other policies in which we can also start returning back, uh, you know, lot of the cash flows. Uh, to shareholders, not just the cash flow plus that we have right now, but we also expect uh, that to uh, you know that we'll generate some good free cash flow in the next couple of years, given that our capex is incremental for the uh, growth uh, that we are talking about. Okay, and uh, when you mean pa- power train agnostic products, is this for CV? Commercial. No, when I say power train agnostic, I mean a new product that is. Uh, not linked to the powertrain so powertrain is uh, either a gasoline engine diesel engine hybrid engine electric vehicle cng vehicle or uh, uh, hydrogen vehicle so something other than that so good example is our suspension vertical the suspension vertical is totally powertrain agnostic as it goes in all vehicle types when it comes to powertrain and our mna will you know be more focused towards either strengthening that or building some similar product which we can get into the availability of okay okay great thank you so much and good luck and just one more question how is the is the is there any change in market dynamics as of now over over few one just qualitatively how the market is as of now market dynamics in what sense in the sense um, the demand on ground and inquiry we are facing so yeah in general demand looks good and uh, you know things have normalized the semiconductor uh, crisis has eased up and um, on all segments demand looks good and uh, there is a lot of pent up demand i think also so we see a lot of waiting periods on the market so generally it is optimistic but definitely there's a lot of caution given uh, geopolitical uh, situation on point but uh, yeah it looks good okay thank you so much and best of luck thank, thank you. you the next question is from the line of sonal from bohead india it's a follow up question please go ahead 
Sir, I have two questions. Firstly, you know, some of the recent launches had a large share of hybrid products booking. So how does your value add like to like change between a hybrid product versus, a, you know, an IC uh, engine product? Sorry, just if you can repeat it, Sonal, your voice is a little bit tired. Some of the new launches, you know, uh, have seen bookings, uh, you know, with a large share from hybrid products. So I was wondering whether you, whether the share, your share in the, you know, in hybrid product versus a normal product, you know, an IC engine product, how, how does it vary, you know? Is it same? Does your share increase? Does your share decrease? So, so in India, what we're seeing is like, you know, if hybrid, little bit, we're seeing only micro hybrid, which has no change, right? I think. Hello. Mrs. Sonal, there is a lot of disturbance from your line. I'm not sure it's from my line because... Uh, okay, I'm hello? just checking. Give me a moment. Kindly proceed. Yeah, Sim, you were telling me about the uh, hybrid versus the non-hybrid. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected while I... Ladies and gentlemen, the line of the management has been connected again. Please proceed. Yeah, sorry, I got disconnected. I'm not sure what where uh, it went up. So please uh, repeat the question. I'll answer it again. Sure, Asim. What I was asking you was the difference between, you know, uh, I mean, the sales for you, you know, like to like product for hybrid versus a non hybrid product. Does it really change significantly? Sure. So in India, we're seeing only a trend of micro hybrid. In the case of micro hybrid or you know minor hybrid cars, there the content remains the same. But in case India was to go into you know some of the global trends of hybrid, where they're fully hybrid cars, then there would be another product required in addition to our product, which also can be produced by us. So the content would increase substantially. But as of now, we don't see fully hybrid development in India to the extent that we see it in other countries like uh, Japan, etc. But if it was to come, then our content work would uh, increase. And so uh, what would be the impact of RE norms for us in terms of value added sales increase, you know? So RD norms we're expecting in diesel vehicles about uh, 20 to 25 increase in content per car and for gasoline vehicles approximately 10 dollars and the same thing, and what would be the impact on MHCVs? Sorry? On the MHCVs? There, there would not be MHCVs, you mean heavy commercial vehicles? Yes, yes. Yeah, there, there is not much change in terms of value. There will not be much change in terms of uh, value, but would it be to change in terms of market share for you due to new technology? Possibly. Possibly, but right now there is nothing firm in front of us, so I won't comment on it. But therefore, there is possibility in terms of market share, but nothing is uh, firm as of now. So there would not be anything significant that I would comment on. And one last question, if I may, you know, uh, in case you have this data, if you are starting sales, I don't want any absolute numbers, I understand it's confidential, but if you're starting sales point in Q3, in terms of value added for it was 100, what would that number be in Q4 and what would that number be in Q1? Okay, I don't have the um, 
number in front of me right um, but i think we are making good progress in terms of you know having value added skills so i'm hopeful that as long as now the balance sheet three customers we can reach some agreement and the different conversations then it would be much simpler to uh, look at that as of now i don't have uh, this kind of an intention okay let me ask this question in a different way have you seen q on q or over two quarters uh significant decline in the raw materials which you use i'm not sure what significant decline in the raw materials you use you know internally i mean in terms of the prices of the raw materials yes yes i don't have the raw material price data but it's been very volatile and generally all our raw materials are indexed uh, with the customer so it does not have much of a business impact and raw materials have been very volatile through this whole covid period and rather with an inflationary trend but uh, you know individual raw materials like this uh, i don't uh, i don't we don't even look at it that much as it's uh, uh, pass on most of it so since you don't share the you know value added sales portion i was trying to understand because you know uh we can deduce that it is in terms of trend on our own if you were to share with us you know if we have that information obviously you know that in general there was there a q on q decline in your raw materials like to like this overall level not one particular no 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 we don't have we don't have that data and we'll see this uh, revert internally if we could even share that data generally we don't like to you know uh, this thing about raw material but uh, let me check if we can also then i'll definitely you know we'll put something out of it so no. possible in terms of that but i don't have it as a proposition yeah. no worries thank you so much sir thank you thank you so much ladies and gentlemen this will be the last question for today which would be from the line of arun sancheti an individual investor please go ahead hi ashim good afternoon am i audible yes, yes please yes. proceed Okay, great. Ashim, uh, my question is very specific to uh, your CV side of the business. Uh, my question would be, in general, how big the market would be in terms of the value and volume terms? Another follow-up to that would be, I understand that our market share used to be around 10 to 20 percent a year back. So, is there any movement to that? And third question connected to that would be that, what is the roadmap that we envision to extend the market share on CV side of the business? so the first question uh, you know roughly uh, the market share uh, would be equivalent to what we are looking at uh, in uh, pascals and we buy commercial vehicles you mean heavy commercial vehicles or do you mean yeah. diesel vehicles yeah heavy commercial vehicles right it would be roughly be the same and probably black numbers uh, we can share off like in terms of market share uh, we haven't seen much change here only thing that happens is that there are only few engines in the entire market we are on two engines and within that engine production and how each engine is performed by the customer there is much more variability uh, that happens in the commercial vehicle market and in terms of point number 3 we are looking at uh, rd definitely as an opportunity where we can gain Uh, some uh, market share, and we are also doing multiple other exercises uh, to gain uh, market share on the CV side uh, of the business, heavy commercial vehicles, where it is low as you know from 10 to 20 percent as of now. Mm-hmm. In general, uh, you know, the CV market broadly would be captured by two big players. Out of that, I understand that you know one of the player caught a captive uh, subsidiary. which is providing them the emission uh, solution we would be left with the another player on the right in that case wherein we are providing them the uh, parts we, we already yeah so i think uh, the captive player uh, also outsources this component right so the captive player doesn't produce our component uh, they produce uh, the entire system all together including the engine so definitely that opportunity and we do work with them so the opportunity to gain um, uh, further share there it's actually quite uh, big so that is one and second as you noted with other dominant player 
uh, they hold most of the business uh, apart from this captive business which you mentioned and that is also an opportunity yes if if i'm allowed to have a clarification on that talking about the first layer wherein there is a captive uh, subsidiary out there you mentioned that there is a opportunity to increase or rather you know garner some market share from their captive business can you elaborate on that please because if it is a their own subsidiary they would prefer to work with the subsidiary itself no so i think with the so big uh, this thing that there is a company that produces the engine then they produce within the subsidiary an entire system also and the canning aspect of the system is something that they outsource they do not do it fully in house maybe a very small percentage will be done in house and within that uh, outsourcing of that uh, uh, business there is an opportunity to gain them okay uh talking about the second player uh, i do understand that the second player in pv side of the business got a different vendor if that be the case how likely is that the same vendor will not got extended to the cv business as well i i don't know i i actually can't reference what you're saying but uh, um usually i can tell you like in case uh, there is a customer who has the pv segment and cv segment within this product uh, definitely uh, the sourcing is done differently because commercial vehicle uh, emission systems are require uh, much more proprietary technology and passenger vehicles uh, also require proprietary but not as much so sourcing is generally indifferent i could not infer um, in terms of uh, which customer etc but in general this is the thing. in a way that answers and thank you for that uh, the only only submission i would have is that it's been close to a year and we are still talking about let's say a ballpark 10 to 15% of kind of market share uh, how we really envision it let's say two year out is it something which which can be extended to let's say 30 to 40% of the market share within two years time frame Sure. So you know, this is done more. The commercial vehicle aspect is done more through our joint venture, and mm-hmm. in that joint venture, we don't have managerial control, right? And the entire full focus was on stability of the joint venture and profitability. As you know, last one or two years, it did not make a profit, and that's where the full focus was because very important to stabilize and then definitely to develop from here. So we of course want to gain market share. uh but it is a uh, lot of effort is going it but nothing material that uh, you know i could comment on right now okay appreciate that thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much as that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments yeah thank you uh, we thank you all for your participation in our earnings call today we hope uh, we have been able to address most of your queries and also we'll get back wherever we can and you can also get in touch with our ir advisors for any further questions wish you a lovely evening and also advance happy independence day thank you so much thank you on behalf thank of sharda motor industries limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line